Hello Penguinauts and the Beardy Penguin and welcome back to For All Kerbal Kind. Now this is actually part 2 of episode 10. If you haven't seen the first part I would highly recommend you go watch it. But we are kicking off the episode with the return of the film from two of our spy satellites. That was Pogoda 8 and now we are returning the film from Pogoda 9. So that's actually all of our spy satellites now deorbited and the US as far as we know didn't tamper with either of them. Well we are not going to extend the same courtesy. This year they have launched three spy satellites, at least that is what our military intelligence strongly believes. Discoverer 3, Discoverer 4 and Discoverer 5. Yes, they're using a civilian space exploration program as a cover for their devious spy satellites. And we would never stoop to such a low level. Not that they can prove anyway, because we've deorbited all of our spy satellites. And you will have noticed that, uh, yeah, we only launched four. And that's because we are planning to steal the film from one of the US satellites. But before then, we do have another more routine launch. This is Svet 10. And this is just completing our navigation systems contract, which we started in the previous part of the episode. We needed to launch two more of these satellites uh, we did actually have to burn the engine of one of these just to get into orbit uh, I had a slightly less than optimal ascent trajectory uh, so one of the satellites is in a much lower orbit but we only needed five to complete the contract so that is now finished and we're using the science that we got from Pogoda 8 and Pogoda 9 to research improved communications interplanetary science mature avionics and probes and lunar landing that's not really for the LK lander not just yet uh, it's more for the KTDU 417 engine which uh, we could use for some larger lunar probes perhaps in combination with the proton we could even do a lunar sample return in a couple of years time but this this is the star of the show this is Vos God 3 and this mission does not officially exist this is a black ops mission to intercept a suspected US spy satellite yes we're gonna fly up to it and we're not going to leave them any clue that we tampered with it. I was very tempted to blow it up uh, we actually <laughs> we're actually carrying explosive charges on the spacecraft but for different reasons uh, we could have snipped off the solar panels but i was thinking ah that would just trigger an early return of the sample no the, the funniest thing and the most useful thing that we could do is fly up and steal the film it saves us from launching a fifth and final spy satellite because we'll get the science from them and it stops them getting the film. So it costs N940 science. And of course, if they try to issue a diplomatic protest, we have all the evidence we need to prove that it was up there for nefarious purposes. So it is the perfect Black Ops mission. And I'm pretty sure the CIA must have anticipated this because they have put this satellite in the most annoying orbit imaginable. It's in a retrograde orbit, 98 degrees, and it's... 140 by 140 kilometer orbit it's skimming the edge of the atmosphere so it is very very difficult to reach and in fact we had to actually upgrade the r11 launch vehicle this is an r11c FICAL launch vehicle with slightly stretched fuel tanks uh, so that we can get into this ridiculous orbit from Baikonur. You'll notice that the Voskhod spacecraft also has some modifications. We have a second airlock to balance out the center of mass because we need to of course do a lot of maneuvering before our EVA to tamper with the satellite but also as an emergency airlock in case either the main airlock gets ripped off which yes did happen during simulations or Valerie gets into trouble and needs Pavel to come rescue him. Now you will have noticed that unfortunately even though we did upgrade the launch vehicle it still wasn't quite enough to get us into this horrible orbit that Discoverer 4 is in and unfortunately we had to expend a lot of our precious maneuvering fuel just to get the spacecraft into orbit leaving us only 75 meters per second of delta v to rendezvous with the target. Now we're rendezvousing with Discoverer 4 because Discoverer 3 was placed into a really eccentric orbit for some reason an orbit far too eccentric for a spy satellite to actually operate in so uh, military intelligence believes that discoverer 4 is the most likely candidate for a spy satellite and that is why we are attempting to rendezvous unfortunately though we just don't have enough delta v left over we would have had a relative velocity with the satellite of 51 meters per second and after doing our intercept burn we only have 21 meters per second left so we were 30 meters per second of delta v short 
of rendezvous. So unfortunately, we're just going to complete our other contract and our other scientific experiments. You see Valerie on EVA just to complete that first EVA contract, even though it's the second EVA. But yeah, this is really irritating that they couldn't quite reach the target because this is the prime crew for this mission and now they're going to be recovering until the start of next year. Pavel, because he's currently the only cosmonaut we have that has previously rendezvoused with something in space, and Valerie because he previously did his power tool evaluation experiment aboard Voskhod 2. So he is the expert when it comes to using power tools in Zero G. You'll see there we got so close to discovering for a four, but unfortunately it was not to be. So we just ordered Voskhod 3 to finish their experiments on food evaluation, in-flight sleep analysis, and in-flight work tolerance, and then we order them to come home. They are out of fuel though, so they end up having to use the backup retro booster, which I'm really glad we have because it's kind of like a safety net for when we're doing missions like these, so we can go down to our last drop of fuel and still know we still have a way of getting home. Uh, it's not advisable to use it though, since it does limit our landing options, since it has very limited delta v so we pretty much have to burn it in apoapsis although we do actually have procedures in place for if we land in the united states now as well as valerie carrying explosives to destroy the spacecraft and make sure they don't get their hands on our technology or any science on board pavel is actually carrying a scorpion machine pistol and this is pretty much just going to be standard procedure on future space flights not only in case we land in hostile territory and to destroy the spacecraft if the explosives fail but also mainly for uh, any hostile wildlife should they land in the Siberian wilderness but uh, this time they have no such concerns because they end up splashing down in the Caspian Sea. So although we didn't achieve our main objective, we still completed our first EVA contract and using the funding from that, we have scheduled a VAB upgrade, which means we will be able to build the largest rockets the world has ever seen. But before we can actually launch them, we will need a new launch pad, which will cost us another 2 million funds. And before we can even think about landing on the moon, we're going to need an astronaut complex upgrade, which requires 3.5 million funds. So the next few episodes, we are going to be saving up for those. But in the meantime, we have one more opportunity to intercept and neutralize Discoverer 4. This is Voskhod 4. This is our backup mission, which was supposed to just have a standard flight profile, but uh, we've stretched the fuel tanks even further, and that's given us just enough Delta V to reach orbit. We do still end up having to burn some of the uh, Delta V of the actual spacecraft, but we have a much larger fuel margin for Rendezvous with Discoverer 4. This isn't exactly the dream team. We're using Yuri and Constantine. I mean, there's nothing nothing against Yuri. He's, of course, a hero of the Soviet Union. He flew the first Vostok spacecraft into orbit, so he knows what he's doing. But Constantine uh, hasn't actually been on EVA before. Of course, Valio hadn't been on EVA, but, uh, well, he had all the training for it. <laughs> and uh, he actually had the experience using power tools in space. So not ideal, but we're still going to try and complete the mission nonetheless, because uh, we have a lot riding on it. As I said, we didn't launch our last Pogoda satellite, which means we're going to be 40 science behind if we don't complete this mission. And of course, we want to uh, we want to do it for style points because this is this is going to be really funny. <laughs> That's the main reason, as well as it just being really funny. It's kind of a throwback to the old collaborative warfare days, which gosh was six years ago now. The second episode of that, I actually stole Tape Gaming Spy Satellite, which was uh, a bit of a series defining moment and still one of my most popular videos on my channel. So any of you that remember those days, uh, do comment below because that was a lot of fun. So this is a bit of a throwback to then. But we're not going to steal the whole satellite. Um, we don't have the capability to do that, obviously. Perhaps once we get the Baran shuttle, we could think about doing something like that. But uh, that is a long, long way off yet. And as I said, I did think about just blowing it up. But uh, as well as Kessler Syndrome and creating an international incident, I thought that this was a lot more Black Ops, a lot sneakier. We're going to neutralize the satellite with them possibly not even knowing that we neutralized it. Once the sample return capsule lands back on Earth and it doesn't have any film in it, perhaps they will just assume there was some kind of malfunction. Perhaps they won't even know we were ever here. And if they do put two and two together, well, we'll have the film to prove its true purpose. So they won't be able to issue a diplomatic protest. So whichever way you look at it, we are getting away with this scot free. And even with the low fuel reserves, Yuri is able to maneuver Voskhod 4 right in close to Discoverer 4. And so the mission 
is a go. So we need to inflate the airlock and get Constantine out and then Yuri needs to maneuver the spacecraft as close as possible so that Constantine can access the cameras. And yeah, it is the unmistakable Hulk of a US reconnaissance satellite. It turns out our military intelligence was correct because it is clearly a giant camera system. There is no masking its true purpose. But this is an extremely difficult maneuver we're about to attempt. Nothing like it has ever been done before. It's almost a shame that this mission is top secret and not widely publicized because this is an astonishing achievement. I wasn't exaggerating in the previous part when I said that these EVAs are extremely dangerous. If Constantine lets go, and we have problems with the tether, he could cause the Voskhod spacecraft to actually collide with the satellite. And not only would that, well, alert the Americans to our presence here, but that would also potentially damage the airlock, snap the tether, or send either spacecraft tumbling wildly. There are many, many different ways that this can go wrong, so we need to do this extremely carefully. As I said, in simulations, I did manage to rip the airlock off, which is why I added the emergency one, just in case. But Yuri manages to maneuver Constantine just close enough that he can jump across to the satellite and extract the film. And there we go. We have it. We have the film sample on board Voskhod 4, and that is is our mission accomplished. And there it is. It's just sitting in the spacecraft. We have stolen an entire reel of US reconnaissance film from a satellite. It was placed in this orbit to make it as difficult as possible to rendezvous with. So the fact that we managed to rendezvous with it is something I am extremely proud of. This is definitely the hardest thing I've done so far in Realism Overhauls. <laughs> I am really happy this mission went as well as it did. And also the mission paid for itself because they set a crewed duration record of seven days, which previous crews have actually exceeded. But for some reason, if you exceed a previous uh, duration record it sets the next record at zero it sets the clock at zero so you'd have to be up in space for an additional seven days to get that contract so this mission's paid for itself and we've got a whole bounty of science and not only the reconnaissance film that we stole we also did some experiments on simple navigation some photography and some uhf slash vhf polarization so we have got a lot of science on board and we're landing dead on target so no need to destroy the spacecraft at least not this time, although Yuri is certainly standing guard until the recovery team arrives as we have landed in the middle of the wilderness. We will actually have TP-82 Cosmonaut Survival Pistols in future episodes. Someone on my Discord is modelling that. But at the moment, we're using Scorpion Machine Pistols since that is what Russian Special Forces, or Spetsnaz, although I guess it would be Space Naz in, <laughs> in this case, did actually use back in 1961. Using all of that science, though, we can queue up a lot of research. We're actually queuing up mature capsules, some space stations, and some early RTGs. But that is the end of the episode. This part was a lot shorter, but I thought I would put the Black Ops stuff in its own little part just to stop the episode going over the 50 minute mark. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I do hope you've enjoyed. This mission was a lot of fun to do, but it took a lot of planning and it took a lot of time. So that's why uh, these episodes have been a little late, but uh, I'm sure you can forgive me for that because this was pretty freaking awesome <laughs> so i'm really happy that it all worked out the next episode we're aiming for the 3rd of october since i've got the start of uni coming up so it's going to be two weeks from next sunday hopefully fingers crossed for that thank you for watching everyone i've been the beardy penguin and i'll see you all next time a massive thank you to my patrons and donators for their generous support and an extra special thank you to Madzor, Peter Lushtinets, The Amazing Steak, Axel Jensen, Delta V, Dennis Klomp, Vermouth, Lady Lagsalot, Simone67, Olaf Hammerhand, Scott Milligan, Nicholas Popkus, World, Wafer, Jagnath, Weir, Extra Crispy, Dreister, Lightning Gamer, Elmac and Nobody Special.